Thank you so much. So now we go from policies and regulation to reality. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because I do represent the research and development industry. Uh, I'm working at the Swedish ICT, which is a research institute, uh, in a department called ACREA, which works with broadband technology, but I'm not. I'm working with the issue of broadband and society, and broadband's impact on society. Uh, and I will tell you a bit about some of our studies that we have made recently. Uh, what we do normally in our day-to-day -day business is that we do studies on, on the socioeconomic return of investments or the benefits of, of the broadband for the society. We also do some case studies and business modelings. And we work, as um, Harriet told you, with broadband strategies and policy support. So we have done some reviews on uh, local digital agendas and uh, local broadband plans. And we also, as we heard, uh, been involved in, in writing the broadband guide for, for the Commission. So let's go back to wh why are we doing all this broadband thing. The digital agenda has, uh, when it was introduced, some quite interesting goals. And I can assure you this will not happen, except one place, and that is Sweden. And I think I will give you some answers why that would be. The reason for doing the digital agenda was not to give people more broadband, that was to create economic growth in the society. And uh, you can see the numbers of new jobs that would be created. We have tried to, to break that down into different regions and, and countries. So why does this not happen? You remember the uh, message, uh, the broadband rollout should mainly be done by the market without any definition of what the market is, but um, the incumbent are surely not the ones that are doing the investment. And the alternative investors, the, the uh, private investors or the public investors are holding back because of, of um, uh, rules, regulations that people imagine exist. Like in UK, as soon as a municipality tries to do something, they are dragged to court, say you are not allowed to, to deal with broadband at all. And private capital, uh, well, they are more interested in investing in houses, not in buried cables. They can't see the business because we have not presented the business case. And I think we should do that. I'm coming back to this in, in a short moment. Uh, yeah. We have been involved, me together with a colleague and the two people in UK to, to uh, write this guide to broadband. This is not the answer to everything. This address the public authorities regions and municipals to help them to create their own local digital agenda. But it does not include all the answers. Maybe we give them some new questions. But we also serve them uh, all the alternative. What, what kind of choices do you have when you want to promote the broadband development? There is a few examples, and, and one of them is Stokav. And another one is a regional network in the south of Sweden, which includes uh, 30 municipals. So the choices, the questions that we ask is that you have to choose an infrastructure model. Do you need to have a new future-proof infrastructure, or can you upgrade the existing infrastructure? Of course, you have to map the existing situation to see, is this enough for a future society? And then think of that these questions are addressed to the politicians. They don't know too much about technology. They just have some pressure for, for, from the industry. And the second question is the investment model. This costs a lot of money. And if you have to choose to build a new school or to build a new fiber cable, that's a tricky question for the local budget. So we need to address some evidence 
on the socioeconomic benefit of rolling out broadband. And then, of course, the business model. Should it be an open model? Should it be owned by the incumbent? Should we support the incumbent to do this, to make their monopoly even stronger? In this guide uh, that you can find outside this room, uh, and you can also download it from, from the website of the European Commission, you can see some of these answers and also the tables where we compare different models. Um, and the financing tools. How could I finance these networks? Should it be done by tax money? Should it be made by commercial terms? Is there any funding from the Commission or from the European Investment Bank? We give some examples on how you can ask for this money. But we also show something that is quite new and that some people in this room know a lot more than I do, of, and this is the cooperative networks because the commercial actors will never go out in the rural areas to build networks in the villages. We need to have cooperation between the people that live there. And we do not include their own work in the deployment. And in every village there is at least one that has a digging machine. And as you heard before, 80% of the cost is to open the ground. That is a really good way to do this. In our poor country up in the north in Sweden, we have thousands of these examples, which of course is supported by the municipals. Um, but you can read more about that in, in the guide. So this is a map of Sweden, and uh, the blue one has uh, local networks, mostly municipal networks, uh, that uh, is, has local ownership. And the yellow one is private owned, and then we have some black spots that does not have a city network. This map changed all, all the day. Uh, so I have stolen this one from the Association of Local uh, Fiber Networks, uh, which are also represented in the room. Uh, but this is an interesting map. Um, this might be the answer why we will achieve the digital agenda. Because the goals that you heard in the beginning, that by 2020, 50% should have at least 100 megabits. We have that today. Six years before the schedule, we have achieved this goal. How come? Because of the local initiatives. This is not the incumbent that has built. This is initiative from the local authorities, local powers, so to say. Um, yeah, and the business model is really tricky, and there is a lot of discussions about open networks. The traditional models is here to the right side, the vertical integrated model where you have one actors that build the network, manage the network, and deliver their services. That's what we call the incumbents. <coughs> and sometimes they are forced to open a network to have local open bundling or bitstream. How fun do you think it is to be a service provider, to put your own service, your own future, in the hand of your worst competitor that also own the infrastructure? I would say that is a risky business. So what we are talking about, not only in Sweden, but in some other countries as well, is to have an open access where we separate the network from the operations and have a freedom of choice for the service providers, and we even have competition between all the layers. I guess we will hear something more about that later from Benoit. But uh, we have made some studies in this in, in the guide uh, where you can see the risks and the pros and the cons of the different models. I will not bore you with all the details. So let's go into the, the evidence. Uh, yeah, first of all, I want to say this. When, when we do plans for municipals and regions, we said, first of all, everything has to be connected with fiber. It's not just people and businesses. It's buildings. It's offices. Streetlights. Just everything that includes communication or, or information has to be connected. That's one of the most important things at all. And that is what happened in Stockholm, that we have an infrastructure where everything is uh, connected. And if you go back to all the other 
paradigm shift from electricity and telephony and whatever, communication has always been the most important driving force for the society. Every time we change the system of communication, we change the society. So we need to operate the neutral networks so we can have free competition and we can see the evidence in Sweden where we have an open network with com uh, competition, lower prices, better quality on the services. And maybe most important of everything to address to the, the public uh, authorities, you have to include broadband in the city planning. We could see from town to town when they plan new areas of houses or even industry, we're not including the broadband. And sometimes they build in new monopolies that is very difficult to get free from. So let's go to the evidence. Uh, we made a study uh, that was on order from the Swedish Broadband Forum, the, the Broadband Commission, the government's Broadband Commission, to see could we track new, more higher employment from the municipals that have fiber. Uh, so what we did was to, to compare the situation between 2007 and 2010, uh, and every dot here is a municipal. And there is what they say, my, my colleagues, the scientists said, it's um, significant but weak. It is there, but it is weak. But if we put numbers into this, to have 10% more fiber penetration in Sweden cost 5.5 uh, billion sec to do. And that has to be depreciated over 25 years. But the impact on GDP is 1.1 billion every year. And this kind of calculation we need to present to the local authorities, to the pub policy makers, to the investors, so they understand the benefit of broadband. It's not just to sell higher bandwidth, it's the impact on the society. Um, yeah, we made also a study on, on Stokkab, and there is a summary of that that you can find on the desk outside. Uh, we look on, on a couple of questions. It could have been possible to include like 100 different questions, but these are the chosen ones. Uh, the higher competition, the lower prices on broadband for enterprises, cost savings for public sector. Just the last one here is very interesting because the city and the region connected all their offices with fiber and then they could have an open tender on the communication which lower the cost in the city by 40% and in the region by 60% which is 100 million sec every year which goes more or less direct back to the taxpayers. Uh, so this is really important. Another thing that is very seldom discussed is the impact on the economy activity. Stokov's own business is, uh, as you probably have understood already, quite good. But the impact on the industry is huge. People get jobs. Companies sell equipment. We have an economic um, system that support economic growth. So thanks to broadband, a lot of other things has happened in the city. So if we look on, on the conclusion into this, you can find all the calculation in the report that you can download from, from Stokab's website, or maybe from ours as well. Uh, you can see Stokab's investment, and you can see the impact of the socioeconomic return, three times the investment, 16 billions. It's not the profit on the network itself, it's the impact on the society that is important. So let's go to another study. We was asked by, by the Swedish, see if I can say right, Association of Fiber something? Yeah? The Association of Local Fiber Networks. Uh, we were asked to see could we track some of the uh, benefits from using fiber connections to uh, digital home care for elderly. 
that was really tricky because many municipals are saying that they have these services, but nearly no one have in reality. But we, found, we find one that has introduced this to 10% of uh, the people that have home care and we put the result of that into calculation. Uh, so if we, we said that if we could deliver this to 90% of the population according to the goals in the digital agenda, 90% should have 100 megabits. Okay, if we succeed that, what will the impact be on society? And we can see that from a small municipal with two people per square kilometers, the impact is 4 million euros every year, which is a lot of money for a small municipal. Um, and if we look on a country in total, we can find that between 2014 and 2020, the benefit will be 6 billion sec. We are a tiny country, so it's not a lot of money. But if you put that in to compare what it will it cost to rule out the fiber, that's exactly the same sum that it costs to rule out fiber to every citizen in the country. If we get a return of that just for this service, and then we have all the other hundreds and thousands of services that we can in include. I will stop there and I hope that you uh, can read more about this report. You can find the summary outside or download at our website. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Christer. Uh